Alrighty, we are back. Welcome to Talk and Ball with Scotty and Sergio. So we haven't been back in a while, guys, but thank you for watching on YouTube and listening on Spotify. Don't forget to, don't forget to like and subscribe. Been a while since I've talked so much. Uh, joining me from LA, not Chile this time, my partner in crime, Serge. Welcome home, man. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? Long couple of days of flying, eh? It's good, to be, yeah, it's good to be back home. It's a little, everything's over here is a little bit more open than in Chile. Chile was really locked down. They were closing the airport on Sunday night. It flew out Saturday night. So happy to be free and getting my vaccine soon, hopefully. Yeah, you left the States because everything was getting locked down there and it was time to leave Chile once everything started getting locked down there. So you just switch in between countries at the moment. Yeah, for sure. But I'm staying here for a while, I think. Trying to be safe, trying to be safe. Until they um, let you uh, get into Australia. That'll be my next flight. I'm waiting for you, brother. Well, we can uh, do a podcast together sitting at uh, my little table in front of my little wall. Um, and you uh, you had a pretty pretty long flight in, eh? Oh, I had a 17-hour layover in Peru. So it was a tough one. It was a tough one. Uh, and food, food poisoning doesn't help either, hey? Yeah, it doesn't help. I thought I'd have my last ceviche, but didn't go so well but thankfully i'm alive and ready to talk some ball hell yeah let's get into it mate um i know we haven't done a podcast in a few weeks so let's just jump straight into what's been going on right now so on today's podcast we're going to break down the game between two of the hottest teams in the nba the utah jazz traveling to the dallas mavericks we talk about the trailer release for space jam 2 gary trent jr hit the buzzer beater to beat the wizards and Paul Pierce, the truth, he's been fired by ESPN. But let's get started. Yesterday, the Utah Jazz traveled to Dallas on a nine-game win streak, their third such streak of the season, to take on a resurgent Mavericks who have just won four in a row all on the road. These two teams played two games in a row in Utah at the end of January, uh, with the Jazz easily beating the Mavs, kind of embarrassing them in both games. Dallas lost two more games in a row after that and took their worst losing streak of the season to six. Since then, the Mavs have gone 19 and eight. Luca has been playing at an MVP level, especially from behind the arc. Uh, they've combined, they've climbed from 14th in the West two months ago. They're now seventh and they're right on the heels of the Lakers, the Clippers and the Blazers. This Mavs, this game, the Mavs were brilliant, especially their defense, allowing Utah only to score 103 points and held Utah to 27% uh, percent from three-point range. Doncic finished the game with 31, 9, and 8. Dorian Finney-Smith chipped in with 23 points. Great win there for the Mavs surge. You've also been following a little bit. You've been impressed with the resurgence from the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, I've been waiting for it all year. I mean, they, they've had their ups and downs this year. Like, well, like most teams that have been lacking their full staff, their full team during the whole season. Um, but now also with the Lakers falling, I expect the Mavs to finish in the top six for sure. I don't want to see them in the, in the play-in. Yeah, they've got an easier, one of the easier schedules to finish now. They've played a few game, hard games the last few weeks with the Spurs. They beat the Spurs. They beat Denver. They beat Boston. They just beat Utah. Um, they've been taking care of the smaller teams when they've had Luka Doncic um, and Paul Zingas, who didn't play in this game as well. But let's look at the Jazz for a second. Obviously, the best team in the league at the moment by their record. But this game, Dallas defended really well, but they missed a lot of three-pointers. And they take the most three-pointers and make the most three-pointers out of any team. Just wondering, once you get the playoffs, which is where people are really starting to question the Jazz, you can't rely on the three-point as much. If it's not going to fall, you've got to find other ways to score. And um, do you think the Jazz have that in their arsenal? I don't think they do. And I'm going to give you two reasons right now. Because first of all, they're a young team and they're not as playoff seasoned as like, let's say the, the Clippers and the Lakers. They don't have that much experience on their team. Um, so come and also even grab the Phoenix Suns that are a younger team, but they have Chris Paul. So that changes everything. If they're going to face those those three teams, I don't think, and especially here's the kicker too. This is the second reason: the stadiums are going to start to allow people. So once you have once you have crowds in there, it's not the same shooting three pointers with an empty stadium, nice and relaxed, nonchalant. When you have people yelling at you, blowing your ears out, that's when you need the experience, that playoff presence. That unfortunately the Jazz don't have it yet. 
No, they don't. Yeah, they're still a young team. Like you're saying, though, there's probably going to be fans, hopefully by playoffs. And Utah are number one, so they're going to have the most games at home. Probably helps shooting when you're at home behind your fans. We all know how rowdy and crazy the Utah fans are from pretty much everyone. You know, no, nobody likes playing in Utah. Yeah, it's just that question because they're going to be coming. They're probably going to stay first. They're probably going to look to play either Memphis, uh, Dallas. Um, do you think they're going to go state? Do you think they're coming first? Yeah, I can't see them losing a ton of games towards the end of the season as well. Um, but we'll see. Like the, the playoffs, as we always say in NBA basketball, it's a different game once you get the playoffs. It slows down. Like there aren't as many three pointers being taken. Yeah, it's definitely a different game. I mean, you could grab a team like let's say, let's say Dallas runs in the seventh position, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully they get into the sixth, so you don't suffer. But let's say they get into the seventh and they play the Phoenix. That could be anyone's series. A hundred percent. Yeah, Dallas at the moment they're they're really trekking up since they've started getting their team back. Paul Zinger's been fit. Doncic was terrible at the beginning of the season, especially from three point range. But he, for the last, I think, two months has been averaging about 40% from three or just above. He went six of 11 last night. He realized early on in the game that he couldn't score in the paint. Rudy Gobert's too big. So they drew Rudy Gobert out. Dorian Finney-Smith had a ton of three-pointers, but hit five, five for 11, I believe, for the game. Um, so Dallas are playing better. Utah are still there. It's uh, interesting. It's always interesting, this West playoff race coming to the, the back of the season because there's everyone jostling for positions. Portland are playing really well again at the moment. Denver, we'll talk about them in our next pod, but they're unbeaten with Aaron Gordon. So yeah, we found uh, a little bottom, key to that team. The bottom part's going to be, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a, a show because you got Memphis there too, Dallas, you have San Antonio, you have Golden New Orleans. Golden State struggling. Golden State's on their way down, but then you have New Orleans, it's on the up. They have Lonzo Ball playing great. No, the West is a lot of fun. Not to mention Sacramento have been playing a lot better recently as well once they yeah. put Ty Tyrese Halliburton into the starting lineup. And they're very um, much the next two. They're one or two games out of the 10th position. Yeah. So let's move on. We've seen the trailer in the last few days has come out for Space Jam 2. It's loved across the world by children, basketball fans, Looney Tunes fans, and MJ fans especially. We live in a world now where everything has to be re remade for today's generation. LeBron James now is starring in Space Jam 2, the new legacy. Serge, you've seen the trailer. What do you think? The trailer, it looked pretty cool. I mean, it's, I'm, as most of you guys know, I'm a Jordan OG fan from Chicago. Um, and I never wanted this movie to get made because it's just too much. You got a guy wearing 23 who's not Michael Jordan playing with Bugs Bunny. I'm just not into it. I would have let, I don't know if you heard, but years ago there was a rumor that Blake Griffin was going to do it. And that was all for that because he just doesn't wear 23 and he's not trying to be Michael Jordan. Yeah, 100%. And that's what it always comes off. Like, I know you're a bit of a LeBron hater. What was the, what was the term you used before? Anti, anti Lebronism. Uh, that's that's got to be in the, that's got to be in the uh, dictionary pretty soon. Man, the amount of people that I see on I Facebook hate him. I hope, hopefully, no one gets onto it before. I just, I just gave my secret out. Copyright, bang, done, <laughs> patented. Um, I like the trailer too, but sometimes I just sit here and look at my, this is another one of those um, moments where LeBron is just trying to catch Jordan. And uh, if he can do a film and star in the film that he not definitely didn't make Michael Jordan famous because he was definitely famous already before, but it just took Michael Jordan to a new, new level. You know, think of Le what LeBron is trying to do? For sure. For sure he is. I mean, he's trying to achieve that level of fame that even the kids will love him, like the really young kids. I, I got to Chile and my little nephew, he's probably six, six or seven. And his mom goes to me, he's like, Sergio, um, Lu um, sorry, Lucas, he really lo loves Space Jam. He's a fan. And I'm like, oh, come in. So I I'm like looking through my stuff in my room because I have all these posters, like old school posters from like Rodman, Jordan era, the Bulls. And I have like 20 posters of Space Jam, but they're all like kind of like coming apart. And I found one for some reason it was between plastic and it was pristine in pristine condition. So I like pull it out and it's Michael Jordan with Bugs Bunny, like in the middle of space, like just gliding. And the, the kid was just like, no way. He went and got it framed. I went over to his house, like for dinner a couple of days later. And he was just like, thanks uncle Serge. And I was like, no worries, no worries. He's like, I want to be like Michael Jordan. <laughs> 
Mate, it was, oh, the, the original was the best, man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge Bill Murray fan as well. I love Bill oh, Murray. Yeah. You had Newman, Newman from Seinfeld. I don't know I the saw, actor's name. See, the, the uh, yeah, I don't really know. I haven't, I didn't see in the trailer there was too many big actors. Don, che- Don Cheadle is the bad guy. Don Cheadle's like that that generated computer image, right? Yeah. Um, I'm a big Don Cheadle fan. Anyone who hasn't seen, go on YouTube and type in Don Cheadle, Captain Planet. It is like the most nuts. It's a bit like rude and there's a bit of violence and a bit of swearing, but it is like one of the funniest clips you'll ever see. But um, it's way off topic. But um, I'm, but, for, I'm uh, still going to watch it. Check it out. Yeah, check it out, guys. It is hilarious. Um, but yeah. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good because I mean I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably watch it, but I'll probably still bag it after I watch it. Yeah, hundred percent. Me too. Me too. That's exactly how I'm gonna work too. Well, let's move on from Space Jam Two search. Uh, yesterday, the struggling Raptors took on the also struggling Wizards. Washington took an eleven point lead into the fourth thanks to another triple double from Russ, who's on fire at the moment. But with seconds remaining, Gary Trent Jr. sprinted down the court with the ball got away with a little push on Raul Neto and sank the buzzer-beating game winner. Trent Jr. was only recently traded to the Raptors from Portland, but Serge, he looks like he's right at home, mate. They've been giving him plenty of shots, and uh, he looks like a really good player, Gary Trent Jr., to be honest. I'm surprised that Portland could let him go. I'm surprised as well. <coughs> I'm very surprised. And uh, this time it came, uh, it came in, in favor of his new team. That was what a game, what a shot. Kind of reminds me of uh, the, end, the end of the NCAA. Oh, what a like, finish uh, that was. So the semifinal. Unbelievable. But yeah, Gary Trent Jr. This is the craziest thing. I was gonna, We're going to do a trade deadline pod uh, a couple of weeks ago. We didn't have a chance, but this is one thing I want to mention. This is insane. In 1998, Gary Trent Sr., his dad, was traded from the Portland Trailblazers to the Toronto Raptors 41 games into his third season. 23 years later, Gary Trent Jr. gets traded from Portland to Toronto, 41 games into his third season. Yeah. Uh, Portland and Toronto, did they do that on purpose or is that just the craziest opportune, like freaky thing to happen? I wonder, I wonder. Like that's just, I mean, you can hear about coincidences, but that's just too much. It's like- That's the biggest coincidence ever. He probably was like, wait, didn't my dad get traded in his third season or something like that? And they're like, well, wouldn't it be funny if we trade you on the same day? Like after you played, for- I don't know. That's too much of a coincidence. But uh, man, it's good to see him playing well. They, uh, Portland obviously wanted a bit more experience when they traded uh, Norman Powell away. Uh, so sorry, they traded for Norman Powell for Gary Trent Jr. and Rodney Hood. It looks like uh, Toronto season's kind of not going the way they planned at the moment, they're really struggling to even stick in the um, playing pitcher at the moment. But on the other hand, uh, yeah, it was, tough, it was tough to watch to watch um, to, uh, Washington play that game because they played on they didn't play a bad game, and also Westbrook's been putting up a solid season like towards the second half of his season. Yeah, he has. His efficiency's got better, and it's got to, you got to sit there at one point and realize. There's really not enough pieces for Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook to really play with. They lost Tom, Thomas Bryant, their center, early on in the year. Dan, Danny Evadi is a rookie. You're relying on Robin Lopez, Davis Batans, Garrison Matthews, Ish Smith. Yeah, even in the even in the East that we always bag out, they just don't have enough firepower to stay in there, Washington. Yeah. But in Toronto, been- sorry, Serge, what were you saying? They've been trending along. They've been trying. I mean, it, it's tough. And also all the criticism that Westbrook receives, I really, I really hate it. I, I mean, the guy plays, he plays his game and he plays hard and it is what it is, you know? He loves it. He's a great teammate. Yeah, yeah I'm sick of people, you can, I understand, I've been, I've probably bagged Russell Westbrook a few times as well. Like there's often, op, there's often times where he's just a little bit out of control, too many turnovers, too many bad shots, terrible efficiency, but his teammates love him. He plays as hard as he can every night. It's the type of player he is. Like you got to respect that. The guy's been an unbelievable player in this league for a long time. And actually, talking about Toronto Raptors, like you got to feel for them. They're still playing out of Tampa Bay. That cannot be easy when you don't have your family, your friends around. Man, like I'm sure when you're in Toronto, you go out for dinner. Like you walk down the street, if you're Carl Larry or someone, man, you get free food. People want to talk to you. I don't know. In Tampa, man, Florida, Florida's done so bad with COVID. Like. You probably can't do anything. They probably can't be going outdoors. Right now, again, again. 
again and again and again, man. It's uh, you got your brother down there as well, don't you? Is he he's pretty worried or he's vaccine, so I'm happy for him because he's got like like type one diabetes, I think. So he was a high risk, but he's good. I'm glad. I'm glad he's safe. But look after yourself, everyone. Everyone, we're still in this thing, so everyone, look after yourselves. Yeah. Um, let's finish today with uh, it's a bit of weird news. Paul Pierce, the truth. He has been fired by ESPN. I'm going to quote Ryan Young from the Yahoo Sports Now. Uh, Pierce went live on Instagram on Friday night in a room full of dancers while smoking, drinking, and apparently playing poker with his friends, all while clearly ignoring basic COVID-19 protocols. Serge, so ESPN, it's pretty easy when, uh, let's say, when you are abandoning the COVID protocols, it's pretty easy to get rid of people. No matter what they're doing. And I mean, ESPN's owned by Disney, right? So they got to keep up a certain uh, facade to act like none of their employees do any any raunchy things. Uh, but yeah, I wonder really what was going through his head at this point. I thought, because he got kids, he's married. So I'm like, are you trying to like get divorced? Are you mad? Did you want to get fired? Did you want to get a, uh, what do you call it when you get fired and they pay you out? A... Um, a settlement? Did you want to get a settlement? Is that what's going on? Because it's way too obvious or you're way too off the rails and on some sort of substances that you're not aware that society does not accept that when you're a television personality talking about sports in a conservative country like America. See, I, I, think, I don't think he's done anything wrong, but I'm going to say, say something before I say that. Who hasn't had a smoke, who had a drink, been with a few girls, been with some mates? But this is the thing that shits me more than anything. Why do people have to post this stuff, Serge? Why have you got to go live and go, like, you can send a video to your friends, maybe, because most people post what you send to them now anyway, which is, like, even worse. Um, but, man, like, don't post it. Look what you, like you're saying, I think he's married. So, yeah. like, now, now, now your missus got evidence that you've done this stuff. Your work has fired you. No one's going to hire Paul Pierce. Like, the best thing you could do is get a job with us. Paul, Paul Pierce, the truth, we have a spot for you on this podcast if you want to join, brother. Come on over. We're, we're extroverts here. You don't need to act all introverted. and You can be controversial here. Uh, let me just write in, talking ball with Scotty, Serge, and the truth. And the truth. Uh, yeah. So talking, smoking, drinking, ball with Scotty, Serge, and the truth. And he can Paul bring some Pierce. workers if he wants, whatever he wants. What did you want, man? I'll have some dancers behind me as well. Serge, like, we can sort that stuff out. COVID-friendly. Yeah, oh, we, can, we can bring on Michael Rappaport as well. Like, if he just wants to comment. Oh, uh, yeah. Have- <laughs> man, the new podcast. Oh, my God. KD's going to hate it. Wow. We, we got to talk about that for one second, though. We haven't spoken. Kevin Durant, come on, man. Like, you got to... I, I don't understand how a guy has... Like he is one of the best players in the world, one of the best athletes, one of the highest paid athletes in the world. Who cares what Ro- Michael Rappaport is saying, dude? I mean, like, no offense to Michael Rappaport. He's an actor. He's a comedian. He does well within his craft. But level of fame and level of success within your career, there's not even comparable to Kevin Durant. Like, if I was Kevin Durant, I wouldn't even talk to him. You know what I mean? It's nice of him to engage if he's going to engage in a professional way, but... But who is Michael Rappaport to get that upset about something and to like throw all these misogynistic and homophobic slurs at him? Oh it's my amazing. God. Using the C, using the C bomb, which is like generally like just part of conversation in Australia. But, but over, here, over there, very, very over fun. there, you could not like that's, I've said some shit on this podcast, but that's the one word that I'm definitely not going to say. I, but to be, and to be honest with you, dropping the C bomb at to what, when I was reading there, I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, respect. But what he said before that was the homophobic part. So I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> no, you can't say that shit anymore, man. And like, who we cares? Michael Rapp- can read that over the air right now. Michael Rappaport's not even Boston's favorite ginger, man. It's got to be Brian Scalabrini. So it's just like, who cares? Maybe Brian Scalabrini's talking some smack about you. Get him back. But it's Michael Rappaport. Funny, funny. They're basically the same person, just with like maybe 10 inches height difference, but they're very similar looking. Very similar. They could be brothers. <laughs> the Scala, the Scala, just with anyway, different well, you, you guys for homework, go online if you haven't seen what Kevin Durant said with, with uh, Rappaport and the back and forth. It's all over Twitter. 
And uh, yeah, Kevin Durant didn't issue much of an apology either. No, he didn't. He didn't. Um, no, it's just, uh, he's, uh, he's very self, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, I've just never seen a superstar who worries so much about what other people say about him. Like, there's like 7 yeah, billion people on the planet. They're not going to like him. They must have picked on him when he was a kid. He was one of those people that they made fun of. So now he can't take a joke and he just blows up. That's what I thought. Yeah, man. Like, just forget about it, man. You are one of the prime athletes in your prime in the world. Just chill, bro. Do whatever you want. Just don't focus on this stuff. Everyone's just so worried about social media and what people are saying about them. Oh, calm down. Last thing I'll say on that, just because I really think it has to be said. I was reading about how the NBA kind of tippy toed around it and they just find him 50 grand, 50 grand for Kevin Durant is like finding me $5. It's not money. When you, if you want to really make a pay, player pay for his actions, you suspend him from a game. Cause that's, you're talking a quarter of a million dollars, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so it's something that it, it kind of resonates more with the people as well, because you know, the NBA is a progressive league and they've always been part of the LGBTQ community um, they don't accept any of this garbage. So I think they went a bit soft. Uh, Adam Silver, in this case, I think he was he lacked a bit of decision making. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they should have gone a little bit harder on him. You can't have kids reading this stuff who love Kevin Durant reading these comments. Like, it, it's not cool, man. It's not cool. In the world we live in now, especially, you can, no, you can't, you can't say that. You can't do that. Um, that's it for us today, Serge. Um, also, have you seen... Day 27, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm there. I was looking at it now. I was going to ask you. Yeah. That's, I, you're like a already, man. Yeah, man. It's, uh, let's see how close I can get to the camera for everyone at home. But it's, uh, yeah, it's getting pretty gross. There's, uh, there's some gray. There's some red. <laughs> there's some black. It's a bit puby. My, uh, my beard is uh, gross. But <laughs> we still got like two and a bit months. So uh, it's going to be terrible at the end. Guys, for those that have forgotten, I'm growing my beard to raise money for the Indigenous Basketball League in Australia. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook in our stories. You can always see what the beard is looking like every day. And uh, our talking with Scotty and Sergio Insta has a little folder there so you can see it day by day. Um, thanks for listening, guys. I know it's been a while, but Serge is back in the States. Yeah. We're coming to the pointy end of the season now. We're like, there's, I think, 20-something games left in the season. So uh, yeah. it's a good finish. It's, it's going to see. We're gonna, everyone's jostling for spots in the um, playoff picture. Don't know who we're going to get. Thanks for listening on Spotify, uh, watching on YouTube. Like and subscribe for us, guys. Um, we're on Twitter. We don't do much on Twitter. We'll hopefully get into it soon. Serge, mate, any final words? I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, no Space Jam 3 for you, Kevin Durant, but uh, uh, <laughs> fun, guys. enjoy Australia, and I'll try to enjoy it over here, and we'll see each other soon. And Paul Pierce, at me. Let's get you on the show, brother. <laughs> yes, you're our kind of people. Beautiful. Guys, take it easy. Thanks for joining us. Play the music, Serge. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>